Welcome to Skillcap's Retribution Paladin Starter Guide. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how Red Paladins are shaping up in Dragonflight by analyzing what's new and how their playstyle has changed. We'll then cover what the best Red Paladin races are before taking a deep dive into the recommended core talent builds for both the Paladin and Retribution trees, while also covering which PvP talents you should be taking and when. After that, We'll go over how you should be gearing, including what your stat priority is, what pieces of gear you should be looking to pick up, and how you should gem and enchant them. We'll then finish up with a breakdown of the most important Ret Paladin macros. By following along closely, you'll learn how to correctly build your character and give yourself the best chance to get a head start on everyone else. And while this guy does a great job of getting you started, you're missing out big time if you're not already a member over at our platform, Skillcapped. We work with the absolute best players possible to give you all the information you need to gain a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Dragonflight. We worked with Renishka, a PvE god who literally gets rank 1 logs on Warcraft logs alongside rank 1 in PvP. Collaborating with Mystic, a ret paladin who's been obtaining rank 1 titles and representing the spec in AWC finals for literally a decade to create the guides needed to ensure you know how to deal more damage than anyone else you'll face in Arena. But of course, we don't just stop there. We have guides that teach you all of the secret tricks that only the very best players know in our new series, Master in Minutes. From making yourself unkillable with broken talent combinations to a secret interaction with Art of War you've never thought of. We've got you covered with our binge-worthy courses that will elevate your skills in the blink of an eye. This, alongside our comprehensive crowd control and survival guides, it's a no-brainer to join Skillcat this expansion if you want to be light years ahead of everyone else who doesn't have access to our courses. We're also super excited to announce our brand new article site for Dragonflight where you can find a written version of this guide. In the article, we've conveniently provided the export link for you to import the talent build we cover in this guide. We also have all the macros listed for you to easily copy and create in-game. We'll be keeping the article updated throughout the expansion with the most recent talents and everything else that the best players in the world are using. So be sure to visit the link in the description, bookmark it, and check back often to keep yourself up to date with the most recent build. Alright, let's get back to the video. To kick things off, let's discuss how Ret Paladins are looking in Dragonflight, starting with what's new. Overall, Ret has access to a very similar toolkit to the one it had in Shadowlands, with Ret Paladins maintaining the ability to pair Seraphim with Final Reckoning for a potent burst window every one minute. Ret off healing has also taken a hit, with Word of Glory feeling a lot weaker than it used to be. Although the addition of Lay on Hands as a usable ability in Arena, albeit a nerfed version, does help offset this, at least for when it comes to off-healing your teammates through high burst damage. Another huge change is the addition of the Consecrated Blade and Consecrated Ground talents. We'll discuss these in more detail later on, but for now just know that these talents are incredibly annoying for enemy teams to play against and are a welcome addition to the Retribution Paladin kit. So what does this all mean for your playstyle? Well, it hasn't really changed too much from Shadowlands, and it actually feels quite similar to how it was right at the start. Those who were around during the first year of Shadowlands likely remember how feared Ret Paladins were, mostly due to the power of Kyrian and the one-minute burst window provided by Divine Toll and the Ringing Clarity Conduit. Well, as we'll get to a little later in the talent section, Divine Toll is actually sticking around and will be a part of your main build in Dragonflight. And although it won't be providing the volatile burst it previously did, it still offers access to a one-minute burst window that can be paired with Final Reckoning. So, what does this all mean for the Ret Paladin playstyle in Dragonflight? Well, with the way numbers are currently tuned, Rets are looking to be a class that not only dominates in burst damage, but also has the potential to outdamage many other classes in overall damage. And while they lack a mortal strike effect and strong peeling tools, they make up for it in off heals and other utility for supporting their team. All in all, Ret remains very familiar to those who have played it in the past, with the main difference being that there's more of a focus on overwhelming enemy teams with a high damage output as opposed to relying on strong off healing to live through enemy pressure due to the weakened power of Word of Glory. 
Next, we're moving on to the best race for Retribution Paladins, of which we've got a handful of options. Human is the most versatile, given that the old Relentless Trinket is now provided as part of the two PvP Trinket Set bonus. This opens up the option for playing with two offensive trinkets, or an offensive and defensive trinket while still having access to a stun removal in the form of Will to Survive. And if you want to have a way to break out of stuns every 90 seconds, you can do that too by playing with a medallion. It's because of this versatility that we recommend playing human. However, you do have a few other choices, whose strength vary depending on the meta. Both Dwarves and Dark Iron Dwarves are a viable pick, especially in a Feral Druid and Assassination Rogue dominated meta, as Stone Form and Fireblood are excellent cooldowns for reducing incoming damage, with the former being a more defensive pick, while the latter can help with offense. We've also got Tarans, which are excellent in fast-paced metas where kills can happen in a flash, due to the strength of War Stomp. When burst damage is super high, a 1 second stun following up your Hammer of Justice or even a random 2 second AoE stun out of nowhere when paired with a Wings proc can be enough to take someone down. Now let's talk about talents. There's quite a bit to talk about, given the huge revamp to the talent system in Dragonflight. The way we're going to explain how to choose your talents is by starting with what we're calling your core build before adding on your optional talents both in the Paladin and Retribution trees. We'll begin with the core Paladin talents. The core build is essentially the talents you'll be using in 99% of your games, either because they're too good or because you're required to spend a certain number of points before moving on to the next section of the tree and the selected talents are just the least worst option. Let's start by looking at the Paladin build. Here, you want to always pick up every talent we've highlighted in green. The noteworthy talents here are the Of Dusk and Dawn and Seal of Order pair, Sanctified Wrath, and the choice between Sacrifice of the Just and Recompense. Starting with the Blessing of Sacrifice augments, this basically comes down to whether or not you want to boost to your damage every two minutes or more frequent access to Blessing of Sacrifice. We do suggest playing with Sacrifice of the Just in almost all cases, but if you're finding yourself in really short games or you just don't want to find more damage from somewhere and don't care about the cooldown reduction on Blessing of Sacrifice, then feel free to spec into Recompense. With the Of Dusk and Dawn combo, you essentially give yourself literally a DPS increase in the thousands. We've got entire guides dedicated to this in our damage course, so be sure to check them out after watching this guide. Next, we have the choice between Seraphim and Sanctified Wrath. While Sanctified Wrath increases the duration of Avenging Wrath by 5 seconds, Seraphim gives you access to a more potent 1 minute burst window, which is proving to be a crucial part of what makes Rhett work in PvP at the moment. It's for this reason most top Rhett's are leaning towards Seraphim for now. In addition to the talents we've selected in green, you can also choose from any of the talents we've highlighted in red. The first and most important choice to make is one that top rets are currently split on. The more commonly used build will see you pick up Divine Purpose and Seal of Alacrity. However, another build which is proving to be just as viable drops these two talents in favor of Seal of the Crusader and Zealot's Paragon. There's no objectively right or wrong answer right now, as both builds are seeing play. So experiment between the two and see what you prefer. From the remaining options, we recommend going with Cleanse Toxins when you face a Shadow Priest, Rogue, Feral Druid, or Death Knight. For reasons we explain in detail in our Cleanse Toxins Master in Minutes guide. You'll obviously want Blessing of Protection against any team with a physical stun and can even pick up improved Blessing of Protection if you feel games are lasting long enough for you to get value out of the cooldown reduction. We then suggest taking Judgment of Light for the passive healing, which leaves you with 4 points to spend, most commonly on the combination of Touch of Light and Obduracy. Note that if you need to avoid breaking CC, for example when playing with a mage, you'll want to spec out of Touch of Light. However, you may also opt to pick up Golden Path and or After Image for a small boost to your healing. One of Seasoned Warhorse or Seal of the Templar can also be taken, with the choice to pick up either of these talents being completely down to your personal preference. 
This leaves your final build typically looking like either of these two builds, but again, each of the talents highlighted in red are viable too. So feel free to play around with your optional talents to find the build that you prefer. Next, let's look at the core build of your retribution tree. Again, you want to pick every talent we've highlighted in green, with the most noteworthy picks being the choice between Radiant Decree and Wake of Ashes, and the choice between Justicar's Vengeance and Eye for an Eye. First, we currently suggest picking up Radiant Decree over Wake of Ashes. We've also got a Master in Minutes guide detailing this choice, but it essentially just comes down to numbers and how it feels. With current tuning, Radiant Decree is the better choice, especially when you consider it's not limited by the single target cap on its spread damage, allowing you to hit multiple targets really hard. It also just feels better to play with at the moment and can hit for insane numbers if enough modifiers are stacked. Justicar's Vengeance is then a really interesting choice since it's been redesigned, to now essentially be a stronger version of both Templar's Verdict and Final Verdict, while costing the same amount of holy power. You will, however, need to drop it in favor of Eye for an Eye, in some matchups due to how squishy rets are at the moment, especially in solo queue where dampening stacks up quickly, effectively making your self-healing much less reliable. You're then left with just a few points to spend on some optional talents, each of which we've again highlighted in red. First, you'll want to take Boundless Judgment and the pair of Consecrated Blade and Consecrated Ground. You then get to put two points in Relentless Inquisitor or just one point while picking up Seal of Wrath. We then have an interesting choice with both Empyrean Legacy and Execution Sentence both being viable picks. Empyrean Legacy will contribute more to your cleave damage, while Execution Sentence can help make your single target burst windows more potent. Most rets are sticking to Empyrean Legacy at the moment. Just make sure that if you decide to use it too, that you're pressing Templar's Verdict over Justicar's Vengeance whenever you have an Empyrean Legacy proc. With that being said, if you want to avoid dealing cleave damage to prevent breaking CC, which as mentioned earlier will normally be the case when you're paired up with a mage, you'll want to pick up Execution Sentence. When this happens, you should also drop Boundless Judgment and the Consecrated Blade and Consecrated Ground pair in favor of Improved Judgment and Hand of Hindrance, while maxing out Relentless Inquisitor and picking up Seal of Wrath at the same time. And as a reminder, when this happens, you'll also be dropping Touch of Light in the Paladin Tree. This leaves your complete standard build looking like this, while the No AoE build looks like this. Next, let's take a look at what your best PvP talents are. From the three PvP talents you get to choose, there's one you'll take to pretty much every single game, Aura of Reckoning. We've got an excellent Master in Minutes video on that that you'll definitely want to check out in order to make the most of this talent. This leaves you with two PvP talents to choose, and you'll usually be rotating between a few of them. First, we have Unbound Freedom, which is invaluable when playing a melee cleave against classes with reliable roots and snares, or against classes that can offensively dispel your freedom. So think Hunters, Mages, Death Knights, Shamans, etc. In these matchups, you'll never want to play without it. Another super common pick is Lawbringer, which was buffed from 5% to 10% in Dragonflight. This should always be taken in any matchup where you value spread damage, something that's typical in almost every solo shuffle match. Pairing this with Unbound Freedom and Aura of Reckoning is likely to be the go-to build in any matchup where your other utility is not required. Blessing of Sanctuary is then your next most commonly used PvP talent, and will primarily be taken to volatile matchups, meaning against teams with heavy crowd control capabilities and burst damage, so typically into rogues and shadow priests. There may also be times where maximizing your team's damage output is the key to winning, especially in cleave versus cleave matchups. When this is true, picking up Luminescence can work wonders. Another talent worth considering is Jurisdiction, especially when facing Resto Druids, or any matchup where you intend to swap to healers a lot with your stun. And last up, we have a niche pick, which we don't really recommend taking in most situations, but Judgments of the Pure can work well into Hunter teams if you're able to reliably line up your Judgment or Divine Toll to dispel their traps. Just know, 
that it can be a significant DPS loss if you find yourself constantly holding on to your judgment in order to dispel traps. It can also backfire if the enemy team covers traps with other magical debuffs to prevent you from dispelling, potentially resulting in a completely wasted talent, especially if they're cross CCing you whenever they trap your healer. Next up, we're going to be covering gear, but before we do, if you want to see the rest of our class course, it's only available at skillcap.com. There, you can access our premium damage rotation and bursting guides, alongside our defensive play and crowd control courses which were designed by some of the best WoW players in the world. And if that wasn't enough, we even offer site-exclusive arena commentaries where you can get detailed matchup strategies to start playing just like a pro. And with a rating gain guarantee, you have nothing to lose, so check out skillcap.com today. Now we'll get into your stat priority and how you should be gearing. Starting with your stat priority, you'll want to focus on getting as much versatility as you can, up to at least 30%. This will happen automatically through PvP gearing, as you'll be using items which all have versatility on them. After that, you've got some flexibility in how you prioritize your next stat, as both haste and mastery are favored. Haste provides more of a static DPS increase by lowering the cooldown of your holy power generators and global cooldown while Mastery works towards increasing your burst damage through a raw holy damage increase. While we do generally recommend prioritizing Mastery over Haste, you should avoid playing with too little Haste. So as long as you have around 10-15% Haste in Season 1 of Dragonflight, you're free to stack as much Mastery as possible. This of course means that Critical Strike is your worst stat and should be avoided. And while you can initially gear up through multiple sources, you'll eventually land on a full set of 424 Conquest gear. The only exception will be the use of two crafted 424 items, one of which are boots that reduce incoming CC by 5%, which you'll absolutely need to use, the other item, a helmet, which has the chance to apply a physical damage over time effect to those who attack you. We're not 100% sure yet if you'll be using the helmet in your final best-in-slot gear setup, but you'll definitely want to pick it up initially as it allows you to immediately have a max item level piece in your helmet slot. You can also consider using the Drake Breaker's mantle and Drake Breaker's arm plates for more mastery at the cost of some item level. At the very least, you'll want to pick up these pieces during the initial gearing process. You also have the option of converting PvP gear into tier pieces. If you're playing with the Justicar's Vengeance talent, you almost never press Templar's Verdict, in which case you'll only want the two set bonus, which you should get on the head and glove slots as they offer the best stats. But when you're playing with Eye for an Eye, you then have the option of picking up the four set. It's just important to recognize this will be at the cost of losing a ton of versatility, making you a lot less durable in Arena, so do this at your own discretion. Note that none of the stat distributions on tier pieces are particularly great if going for the four set, but given that tier shoulders have the most crit, that's the piece you should avoid. As for trinkets, there's a handful of options, each of which are viable. If you're not playing a human, then you will always want to use the gladiator's medallion. This can then be paired with either an offensive or defensive option. On the defensive side, We've got the Gladiator's Emblem, which is great for having an extra defensive cooldown to press, and also buffs the absorb effect of your Shield of Vengeance when playing it. And on the offensive side, there's the Gladiator's Badge of Ferocity, which is an excellent choice for pairing with your Final Reckoning and Divine Toll combo. We've also got the Insignia of Alacrity, which provides a relatively high uptime strength proc along with some passive haste. But between the two, we do recommend the badge, as it allows you to consistently buff the damage of your 1 minute burst window. This leaves a handful of builds, depending on your race and the matchup. Humans looking for an offensive build can play both the badge and insignia together for the highest damage output. Otherwise, they can play the badge with either an emblem or a medallion, depending on the matchup. And every other race will want to pair a medallion with either a badge for an offensive build or the emblem for a defensive build. Moving into gems and enchants, this one's pretty straightforward. As versatility is your best secondary stat, you want to both gem and enchant this where possible. You'll be using a tiered medallion setting to get gem slots in your neck. 
You'll then use one main stat and versatility gem along with two versatility and mastery gems. You'll also want to enchant your rings with versatility. Next, there's a handful of speed enchants you can get which go on your bracers, cloak, and boots. And although you do have the choice of getting a stamina enchant on boots if you prefer the very minor increase to your survivability. You then have the choice of enchanting your chest with either a full strength stat boost or a mixture of strength and stamina depending on your preference. This just leaves us with your weapon enchant, which you'll want to get the strength stat boost for. The final section we'll be going through is macros. As a red paladin, most of your macros are based around helping you easily support your team with targeted utility and off heals. You'll need to decide between making party 1 and party 2 macros or using macros that cast spells on a specific teammate's name, which you can then adjust on the fly whenever playing with new teammates. Once you've decided on the type of macro you prefer to use, you'll then need these macros for Blessing of Protection, Blessing of Sanctuary, Blessing of Freedom, Blessing of Sacrifice, Cleanse Toxins, Word of Glory, Flash of Light, and Lay on Hands. In addition to these support macros, you also need a handful of focus macros for Hammer of Justice, Rebuke, Hand of Hindrance, and Repentance. You should then create a few offensive macros to pair your Gladiator's Badge with Final Reckoning, Divine Toll, and of course, Avenging Wrath. This will allow you to use your badge during your burst sequence, no matter which ability you start bursting with. You may also want to macro your emblem into Shield of Vengeance for the increased absorb value. We also suggest making either an at cursor or at player macro for final reckoning to make your burst sequences feel a lot smoother. Another set of macros we recommend making are slash start attack macros, which you want to put into most of your damaging abilities just to make sure your auto attacks are always happening. And finally, You'll also need a Cancel Aura Blessing of Protection macro when playing against mages to prevent them from spell stealing your BOP if you ever need to use it on yourself. For example, to keep yourself alive against an RMP kill attempt. In addition to this, you'll also want a Cancel Aura Blessing of Freedom macro for the times you're not playing with Unbound Freedom against a mage. Again, just to prevent them from spell stealing it. And instead of creating a separate bind for this, we recommend building it into another bind. For example, your mount bind. All right, guys, that's it for this one. As a reminder, don't forget to visit and bookmark the written version of this guide linked in the description that we'll be keeping updated throughout the expansion over on our brand new article site. And if you're looking to gain a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Dragonflight, head over to skillcap.com right now and check out our premium courses risk-free. That's right, we're the only service that dares to literally guarantee at least 400 rating while actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.